गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड सो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर कॉल एज एग्रीकल्चर एज वी नो विदाउट एग्रीकल्चर मैन कैंड के नॉट सर्वाइव द बेसिस ऑफ ऑल द सिविलाइजेशन इज एग्रीकल्चर वेदर इट इज अ इजिप्शियन सिविलाइजेशन वेदर इट इज अ सुमेरियन सिविलाइजेशन वेदर इट इज हरप्पन सिविलाइजेशन और वेदर इट इज अ इंडियन सिविलाइजेशन so agriculture is backbone of all the civilization so let us understand various terminologies in agriculture various crop systems in agriculture and various inputs required for the agriculture and overall agricultural development so friends when we say about agriculture what do we mean by agriculture so agriculture again this word word is again derived from the latin word called as agr or agri which means culture uh, sorry which means soil so agar means soil and culture means cultivation so by using soil we are doing cultivation of various crops so that's why they are calling it as a agriculture so agriculture comes under very uh, various economic activities but broadly we categorize economic activities into three sub categories these three sub categories are primary activities secondary activities and tertiary activities primary activities are directly related to nature human beings directly directly deal with the nature and take raw inputs in secondary activity this raw inputs is converted into some final product and tertiary activity incorporates services like transport trade banking insurance so these are the services so physicality reduces as we move further this type of activities then as you go to the 12th standard ncerts then you will see more activities like uh, quaternary activities quinary activities so there are higher up activities but in this ncert we are going to concentrate only on three activities primary secondary and tertiary and specifically in this chapter we are going to concentrate only on the primary activities so as i said primary activities deal directly with the nature so agriculture is the activity where we have to deal directly with the nature so agriculture is a primary activity fishing is a primary activity hunting hunting gathering is a primary activity so for example you are taking food grains from the agri agriculture activity or you are taking fruits from the agriculture horticulture activities so you sell that fruit to a company fruit produce uh, food processing company that food processing company takes a juice out of that fruits and packed it in a box or a small can and sell it in the name of tropicana or sunkist or whatever it is so that comes into the secondary activity so processing manufacturing is a secondary activity now this fruit juice has to be reached to the hyderabad so for the for that you required transportation so railways trucks planes are used to transport that fruit juice from himachal pradesh to hyderabad so that transportation will come under the tertiary activities so in this way these different different activities are categorized in the different different sections so friends here as i said we are going to concentrate on the agriculture because 50% of the world's population is directly related to agriculture so 50% means half of the world's population is surviving on the agriculture even we can say that without agriculture no one can survive so you can see in the this period of lockdown only essential services are there not even your coaching institute not your even your upsc exam is essential okay but agriculture activities are essential which are allowed to work so people we always call them as illiterate we call them as a uh, less developed than us and we consider people we are which are preparing for the upsc exam are the best people in the world so their activities are not at all essential they are not required at all okay so world can survive without ias officer ips officer in if extreme condition comes one world can survive but world cannot survive without agriculture so agriculture is the most essential activity anything on the planet dies if agriculture survives human being can survive getting it so two third of the 
India's population is directly dependent upon the agriculture. So you can see the almost 70% of the people are directly dependent upon the agriculture. So friends, when I am talking about this agriculture, this word again comes culture, 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 culture. Okay. So this NCRT, <coughs> sorry. So our NCRT mentions five types of cultures. So first, as we know, agriculture's agriculture, which is science of growing crops, rearing livestock, and rearing bees, or uh, we can say rearing uh, other types of animals. Second is sericulture. Sericulture means rearing of silkworm. Third is pisciculture, means breeding of fishes, specifically in the artificial fish ponds. In Andhra Pradesh, I think Nellore and Guntur side, you have lots of pisciculture and this agriculture ponds where fishes are go grown. Even in the Vijayawada and uh, Mehboob Nagar area near Hyderabad also have uh, near some companies which are growing this pisciculture things. Then viticulture. Viticulture means cultivation of grapes. So grapes wines. Specifically, you will see this Maharashtra Nasik area and Sangli in the Maharashtra. They have a huge grape yards. So these Sula wines and wineries are there in this Nasik where these grape wines are there. Okay. And then horticulture means growing of vegetables, flowers, fruits together. We are calling it as a horticulture. So five types of cultures have been mentioned in your NCRT. They are very, very important. So now when we are talking about agriculture, let us consider agriculture as a system. We have heard the word ecosystem. So system means what? System means it has a components. It has a certain inputs. It has a certain processing going on and it has a certain output. This, that input is getting converted into the output. So this entire system, entire thing which are related to each other, we call it as a system. So input, processing and output. So this system can have a self-sustaining type of cycle. So it can self-sustain itself. Some systems like ecosystem, they can self self-sustain without interference of the external factor. But agriculture, if we call as a man-made system, so it requires human interference for its survival. So as a system, what are the inputs of this system? So agriculture, what inputs do we require? You will require seeds, you require fertilizer, you require machinery, you require labor of the human beings. So this input is required. And in between you have a processing, so processing is done through various operations like you have a plugging. So you have to plug the field, you have to plow it, you have to irrigate it after plow, so sowing the seed, you have to irrigate it. Then you have to weed, weed, uh, you have to take out the weeds from the, uh, from the agriculture land. Then you, after that you have to harvest. So these are the various operations. Then output, what is the output? So outputs, outputs as we know. So whatever food grains that we are eating, so these are the outputs. So from uh, crops, you are getting food grain. From animals, you are getting milk. You are getting wool. You are getting uh, silk. Okay. Then uh, from birds, you are getting eggs, chicken, and so many things. So in this way, we can consider agriculture as a one foolproof system. Getting it. So here, different, different, different inputs and outputs are given to the system. Now. Once we have seen it as a system, let us understand what are the types of agriculture or types of the farming that we have. So basically, agriculture is classified into two types. First is a subsistence farming, another is a commercial farming. So broadly, you are classifying it, is in, uh, it into two farms, subsistence and commercial type of farming. Subsistence means what? Subsistence means only to feed your family, getting it. It is not the not for the purpose of selling into the market. So farmer is doing farming only to feed their family. You are calling it as a subsistence for farming. So in this subsistence farming, inputs are very low. Capital uh, invested is very, very low. Output is also very, very low. And people who are working in the farm are your own family member, getting it. So you are calling it as a subsistence farming. India, most of the farming is a subsistence farming. Why? Because farm sizes are very, very small. 
and we have a huge availability of rain you have availability of sunshine so in the same land you can take multiple crops in a year so for first for three four months you took rice then after that you have taken jowar after that you have taken some vegetable after that you take some potatoes so in a year you are taking all the uh, all the requirements of your household okay so this is called as a subsistence farming so subsistence farming is very fam is very uh, uh, in uh, we can say in practice in india so the root of this subsistence farming goes into the colonization so this zamindari system mahalwari system in this system lots of fragmentation happened lots of uh, we can say extraction of peasants have happened from the britishers so because of that entire agriculture lack of input and lack of development has turned into the subsistence type of farming okay so all over the world the countries which are suffering from the colonial era they have they are also uh, turning on the subsistence farming so you can see in the african countries people are mostly in the subsistence farming in the south american countries people are mostly into the subsistence farming and asia even china is also on the subsistence farming so rice is the major crop which is grown in the subsistence farming because it is easy to easy to be sown it is easy to be eaten you don't require much processing of the rice you can directly eat it uh, you can directly steam it and eat it getting it that's why rice is one of the famous crop for the subsistence farming second type of uh, subsistence farming okay so we can classify subsistence farming itself into intensive subsistence farming and primitive subsistence farming so whatever i have spoken about is about intensive subsistence farming that means you are growing multiple crops in a year uh, on your farm primitive subsistence farming is of two types first is a shifting cultivation and another is a nomadic herding so for guys shifting cultivation is a primitive subsistence farming in which these are tribes living in the jungle what they do they just burn a part of jungle into the ashes so this area is very very fertile this ashes we have fallen on the ground they are also make it double fertile so now they mix this ashes ashes with the soil and they grow the crops so for 8 to 10 years they will grow crop in this cleared field getting it and after that once the productivity of that field is gone they will again abandon it and they will move to the some different area they will clear this area now and this area again jungle will grow in 5 to 10 years and again this will be covered with the vegetation getting it so this is a subsistence type of farming so a group efforts are required here this farm is not owned by any one person so entire tribe is owning this farm and they they will distribute the output of the farm getting it so this this type of farming is very famous in the tribal areas in the amazon tribal in the areas in the northeast india in the africa it is very very famous so it is called with the different different names even southeast asia huge amount of subsistence farming is Uh, or shifting cultivation is practiced over there it is also known as slash and burn because you are going to burn the forest okay so it is also called as a jhumi so in the different different areas it is named in a different different ways so in the northeast india you are calling it as a jhumi milpa in the mexico roka in the brazil and ladang in the malaysia so this question can be directly asked for your prelim so very very important for the prelim so juming where you call it as a juming milpa roka and ladang so these are the very very important names that you should know next subsistence farming or primitive subsistence farming is a nomadic herding so as you guys know there are certain uh, tribes or we can say sub tribes they are not completely tribes so they are called as a nomadic tribes so they are not exactly tribes but they are sub tribes because sometimes you will find them in the city sometimes you will find them in the villages sometimes they are on the uh, green meadows sometimes sometimes they are on the top of the mountain so depending upon the season and availability of the food for their livestock like sheep goats they will move from one area to another area so specifically this type of farming is done 
in the semi arid regions because semi arid regions are always suffering from the rainfall so they have to move from mountain top to the valleys from valleys to mountain tops so this type of agriculture is very famous in the africa central asia jammu and kashmir okay and so much uh, lots of parts of india like rajasthan maharashtra even in the andhra telangana also you will find these people herdsmen moving from places to places so these are the two types of primitive agriculture practices okay now second type of agriculture is commercial farming so first we have seen subsistence farming now let us move towards commercial farming commercial farming means the farm produced is for the selling into the market and for earning the profit so you are producing it for the profit making orientation so these crops are grown on the huge tracts of land subsistence farming crops are grown on the very small land but on the commercial farming huge land huge tracts of land you are growing the same crop so in the subsistence farming you can grow three four types of crop in a year so you grew the wheat you grew the rice you grew the potatoes you grew the vegetables but in the commercial farming in one year we will take only one farm because huge farm is involved in this so in one year generally one or maximum two crops they will take getting it so here crops and animals they are grown basically for the profit purposes so in india we have very less one or two percent commercial farming not much but in the the grassland region of the, of the temperate area huge tracts of lands are used for the commercial farming because population is very less huge tracts of lands lands are available and climate is very sufficient for the growth of these grasses so temperate grasslands of north america russia central asia europe they are using this commercial farming or uh, this huge tracts of farming commercial farming again we can classify that into mixed one of the classification is a mixed farming so mixed farming means what generally farming you are only growing one type of crop but in the mixed farming you are taking crop you are taking you are rearing livestock you are also taking uh, you are also growing fishes you are also do, uh, growing pigs you are also growing poultry so all things together so you are calling it as a mixed farming so mixed farming is a very profit oriented farming because whatever waste is there of this uh, crops this waste is going to the animals animal waste can go to the poultry and poultry waste can come as a manure to the farm so in this way they circulate the waste material from both all the types of farming so you are calling it as a mixed farming generally in india farmers are doing this on a very subsistence level so mixed farming is can be also done on a subsistence level like for example in a telangana you have a farmer who have just one or two acres of land and he will have two cows and sometimes in the uh, rainy season he will grow fishes in his farms so what he will do he will grow rice along with the rice he will uh, take prawns he will take fishes in the rice pond and then whatever uh, output is there rice uh, uh, rice waste is there or other crop waste is there that he will feed to the cows getting it and whatever waste is coming from the cow that is going to the farm so in this way subsistence mixed farming can be also done and large level mixed farming is done in europe usa argentina south africa new zealand the same thing that we have seen in terms of commercial farming another type of commercial farming is a plantation so you have heard about rubber plantation sugarcane plantation cashew plantation mango plantation tea plantation coffee plantation so these are the one single crop is grown for years so once you have a coffee plant plantation it will go for generation to generation you have a tea plantation it will go for generation to generation rubber plantation it will go for generation to generation getting it so these are the different different types of plantations you require huge amount of labor in this plantation Capi capital uh, invested in the plantation is also very very high now 
After this plantation, there is one more type of farming. After these two types of farming, there is one more kind of farming called as organic farming. But it is not a separate type of farming. It is, uh, we can divide farming into conventional type of farming and modern type of farming. So organic farming comes into the modern types of farming where conventional techniques and non-chemical fertilizers, non-chemical manuals are used for the farming purposes. So no pe chemical pesticides, no chemical fertilizers are used over here. No genetically mod modified crops are used over here. So we are calling it as a organic type of farm. So you have heard about this organic type of farm. Now friends, after seeing this different different types of farming, let us understand major crops in the world. So I hope you have understood these types of farming. Now, when we are talking about major crops, let us see three to four crops which are mentioned in your NCRT. Also, when we are going to see agriculture as a chapter, we are going to see these things in much detail. First major crop is a rice crop. So rice is one of the very, very important crop. As we know, even people of Andhra, we love rice. Okay, we make biryani in the Hyderabad. Very famous, paradise biryani. Okay, so you guys have visited the places. And uh, generally, South India is uh, very famous for this rice. So rice as a crop, is a major crop of not, not just the South India, but whole world. Whole world is living on the rice. And in India, in the Harappan times, it is said that India had, uh, from that time till date, we had 20,000 varieties of rice in the world. So, but in India, in like Andhra Pradesh, different varieties grown, Punjab, different varieties grown, uh, West Bengal, different varieties are grown, Northeast India, different varieties are grown. Kerala, different varieties are grown. Even these varieties will vary season to season. In Kerala, even in the rainy season, they will grow a very short variety of rice, which is very medicinal purpose. And you will get only till the August. Only 10-15 days that, that rice will be finished. And after that, you won't get that rice. So, these rice are very, very important staple crop in the world. Getting it. So, for growing of rice, you require very high rainfall. You require very high temperature. Okay, and you require to make a pond type of situation in your farm to grow the rice. <clears throat> so that's why these farm ponds or rice ponds are very also uh, useful for the grown, growing of fishes and prawns. So China is a leading producer of rice. <clears throat> After that, we have India, Sri Lanka and Japan. And even Egypt is also very uh, fond of eating rice, though it is a desert area. <clears throat> Next important crop is a wheat. Wheat is a rubby crop. Okay, It grows in India in the winter season. But in the temperate region, it is growing throughout the year because it is done as a commercial farming. So huge tracts are grown. So this Ukraine is known as a uh, the center of the wheat or the, it is a center point of the wheat or it is called as a granary of the wheat. Russia and Ukraine it is called as a granary of the wheat. Even Europe is also part of this granary. So you require very less rainfall to heat. Temperature is required very less during the growth growth season. So this USA and uh, uh, Russia and Europe, they are growing huge wheat. In India, we are taking this into the winter season. So this, uh, we call it as a Western disturbances, a type of rainfall called as a Western disturbance is very useful for the growth of the wheat in case of India. Now friends, Next type of crop is a millet. So millet are nothing but a coarse grains. Which are those crops? You have eaten them. Jowar is there. Ragi is there. Bajra is there. Okay. So these are the different different millet crops. Now here, these the, the best thing about the millet crop is that these crops can grow, can be grown at very high temperature in very less amount of water and less amount of nutrition or less amount of fertilizer. You just have to throw it on the ground and you just don't have to look after it. It will just grow. It is that type of crop. But they are very, very full of micronutrients. So many micronutrients are there in the millets. That's why this government has started national millet mission to promote these millets because staple food like wheat and rice, they have very less nutrition. But millets, they have a very huge amount of nutrition in them getting it so india is one of the center of growing the 
millet. So millets are generally considered as a poor man's food. So the poor countries like Nigeria, China, and Niger, African countries are growing this millet. Okay. So friends, this was uh, about millet. Now let us understand about maize. Maize is a very very important crop. Maize is used as a fodder for animals as well as for the human beings. Maize flour is used for various purposes, various so many purposes it is used. So it it also requires very moderate temperature, moderate rainfall. It grows very well in such type of temperature. But it requires well drained fertile soil. Soil should not hold the water. So USA, India, Russia, China, Mexico, they grow huge amount of maize. Mexican maize varieties are specifically famous in case of India. Next is a cotton. Cotton is very famous from in India since the ancient times, since Harappan times. Even cotton was known as a sindoor in Harappa. Okay, so. Now I don't have a place to write, so it was called as a sindon. In uh, art and culture, it will be very useful for you. So this cotton from Harappan civilization used to go to the Sumeria, Egypt. This type of location is it used to go. So cotton, ancient time, short short thread cotton used to be grown. Now we grow long thread cotton like Egyptian cotton. Now cotton requires very high temperature. It requires light rainfall. Specifically, black soil is very suitable for the cotton. That's why this black soil is also called as a regur soil. Okay, when it is grown, when it comes to this stage, then there should not be rainfall. There should not be any frost. Getting it. So these types of conditions are very very useful for the cotton growth. So China, India, Brazil, Pakistan, Egypt, and some other African countries, they are growing the cotton crop. So cotton seeds are used. Cotton, all parts of cotton are useful. Fiber is useful. Seed is useful. Cotton stalks are useful. So each and every part of the cotton is used in this or that purpose. Now, next fiber crop like cotton only is a jute. But jute is a different than the cotton. So jute is a little bit coarser. It is not soft like cotton. So jute clothes are not that much famous. and jute is used generally for the bag making so the grain bags sacks is used is made from the jute so it is very strong generally it is grown in the northeast region and in the west bengal so it is golden in color that's why also it is called as a golden fiber so for transportation purpose for packing purpose jute is very very important crop and compared to nowadays we are using plastic bags but jute So the bags are very organic plastic so makes lots of pollution getting it so that's why jute is preferred jute jute should be preferred over the plastic so jute requires very high rainfall and very high temperature and very humid climate okay so bangladesh and west bengal are very famous for the production of the jute so friends hope you have understood this uh, jute business next type of crop is a coffee coffee very famous in the south india i know you guys love drinking filter coffee so how this coffee is made so coffee as uh, coffee is uh, generally made or coffee is grown on the mountain as well as it is grown on the plains so mountain there are two varieties of coffee arabica and robusta arabica is grown on the mountains robusta is grown on the plains Arabica is very famous in terms of its odor and in terms of its taste. So if you see coffee, very co- you see some coffees are very cheap, some coffees are very costly. So Arabicas are generally very costly, and in international market they have very high demand. So coffee requires higher rainfall, but soil should not hold the water. So well drained soil is required. High rainfall, high water. So generally it is planted on the hill slopes. After that you require temperature also required to be little higher side so more than warmer temperatures are required over here so coffee is grown in the kerala west uh, kerala tamil nadu karnataka specifically baba buda and hills in the karnataka brazil is the really leading producer of the coffee remember after that we have colombia and india so there are various types of coffees we will see in detail in the agriculture 
Next is a tea. So tea is very famous for its aroma. We love tea. Okay, Indians love the tea. Whomsoever comes our home, first we greet them with the tea. In the lockdown period, you have consumed lots of tea and coffee. So you must be craving after watching these pictures of tea and coffee. So this is one of the beverage crop. It keeps you awake when you are studying or when you want to sleep. It will keep you awake. Okay. So tea also requires higher rainfall, high temperature. It also requires well-drained soil. Water should not be logging into the uh, tea fields. Okay. That's why it is also planted on the mountains. So Kunur region in the Tamil Nadu, so Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, and specifically Northeast India in the Darjeeling and in the Kangra region of the Himachal Pradesh, coffee or uh, tea is planted. So India is one of the leading producer of the tea. Then you have Iran, you have Kenya. So our tea goes into the Iran. So very high quality teas are there in the world. Even some few lakh rupees kg, they will cost you. These types of quality teas are there in the world. Okay. So I hope guys you have understood uh, this uh, chapter very well. Now at the end of this chapter, that uh, it talks about agricultural development. So now we have seen the various crops, types of agriculture, subsistence, commercial, primitive subsistence, mixed cropping, mixed farming, this we have seen. Now agriculture to sustain and to support the growing population. So subsistence farming and uh, this uh, primitive subsistence farming was useful when you had a very low population. The people who used to live were very, number was very less. Now, more and more number of people are uh, getting birth and population is increasing. So you require agriculture development because you have to sustain the huge population. You need food security for this population. Okay. So agriculture development is nothing but to effort to increase the production of the farm. Getting it. Agriculture development aim is nothing but to increase the production of the farm or increase the productivity of the farm to meet the growing requirement of the growing population. Getting it. So food processing is increasing the requirement. As we are getting richer and richer, we require we eat a variety of food. So that's why the demand on the agriculture is increasing. And pressure on the side side by side is also increasing because farmland is getting reduced day by day. Okay. So how we can develop the agriculture? First of all, by increasing the cropped area, but we don't have that option nowadays. Second is increasing the number of crops grown. That also is slowly, slowly getting reduced as fertility of the soil is going down. Third, improving the irrigation faculties like using the drip irrigation, okay, using the sprinkler irrigation that we can do. Use of fertilizers that is done on the huge basis, but uh, this has some drawbacks as well. Using the high yield variety uh, seeds. Yes, we are using HYV seeds. Okay. Then by mechanization. So by all these processes, we can increase the productivity of the farm by use instead of plowing by the hands, we are plowing by the tractor. Instead of harvesting by the hands, we are harvesting by the harvester. Okay. So mechanization is also one of the important thing for for the development of agriculture so friends these are the different different points about the agriculture development so why we are developing the agriculture so as i told you is for the food security even this lockdown period the our prime minister in the last speech told that we have given free food to 80 crore people okay we are population is 140 crores out of them, we have given free food to 80 crore people in last three to four months. So this is called food security. But food security has a various dimension. Food security comes into the play when we go through the disaster, like pandemic. Everybody is sitting at the home. So who will grow the food? So food is already secured in the go downs and that is given free of cost to the people. Getting it. So food security is a perfect definition is that everybody at every time is getting all nutritious and healthy food to eat according to their requirement and demand. Getting it. It will have a good nutrition, nutritional, a good nutritional uh, value. It will have a enough quantity. It will be timely provided and it will provided in a sufficient amount. So for the 
sustainable and healthy living of that person so you are calling it as a food security so friends can we achieve the food security is india able to achieve the food security how far we are away from achieving the food security what are the impediments in achieving the food security and what what actions we are taking in achieving the food security these are the questions as a upsc aspirant we need to think about okay so friends this is what this chapter about agriculture talks about i hope you you have heard you heard this nicely and you have understood it if you have any doubt please let me on the telegram now let us understand the mcqs based on this chapter so horticulture means yes yes growing of foods and vegetables golden fiber refers to jute leading producer of coffee yes brazil india russia brazil okay so very simple questions hope you have understood this so see you tomorrow bye bye thank you